Hello guys, welcome to Bing Engineers. This is the fifth tutorial in the basic electronic component playlist. Now in this previous tutorial, that is tutorial 4, we have learned about pin junction diode and its working. Now click on this thumbnail to watch that video if you haven't watched it. Now let's go into the tutorial 5. This tutorial 5 is about Zenard diode. You now Zenard diode is also a kind of pn junction diode but it differs by something now look how is inner diode looks you can see this is a zener diode very small and exactly looks like a normal diode you can see a small black band here and the other part is transparent almost this is the cathode part and this is the symbol representation of a Zener diode for the normal diode this line this straight line used to be there but these bending should not be there in the normal diode symbol so these are the cathodes this black band is cathode here the straight line is the cathode so this is the n type this side this is the p side here also this is the n side it is the p side so that's how the Zener diode looks so how is Zener diode is made? How it is different from a normal diode? A Zener diode is almost same as a normal PN junction diode. But in a PN junction diode, what happens that P-type semiconductor and n type semiconductor are doped to make a PN junction diode. Again, in the Zener diode part, the P-type and n-type are doped, but they are heavily doped. The main difference between Zener and a junction diode is that junction diode can conduct a current only in one direction that is the forward bias direction. Now what is the forward bias direction I told you in, in the previous tutorial. Look this is a diode okay this is the N side this is the P side if the N side is connected to the battery negative terminal and the P side is connected to the positive terminal of the battery then it is considered as forward bias condition. And in the normal diode case, then only the current flows from P side to N side. In the reverse direction or the reverse bias condition, the current doesn't flow in normal diode. But in this Zenard diode, now what happens in the Zenard diode that if it is in the reverse bias condition, then even the current flows after a certain limit. So that is called a Zenard voltage, Zenard breakdown voltage. So let's look at the characteristics. So these are the two characteristics almost look similar this is for Zener diode this is for pin junction normal diode in the forward bias condition that means in the first quadrant of both the graphs you can see the curve is almost same that means the Zener diode acts as a normal diode when it is in the forward bias condition what happens in the reverse bias condition is the main part here look in the pin junction diode when it is reversed biased it doesn't allow any current to flow till some breakdown voltage you can see a p for a pin junction diode the breakdown voltage is very high it is 50 volt now if the 50 volt is applied to the terminal voltage of a pin junction diode it will be damaged now in the Zener diode part the breakdown voltage of a Zener diode is very low compared to pin junction diode. You can see it is 6 volt. Let it is 6 volt. There can be 5 volt Zener diode, 7 volt Zener diode. This is 6 volt Zener diode. That means whenever the Zener diode potential terminal potential will exceed 6 volt, then it the current will start flowing to the Zener diode in the reverse direction, and the potential difference across the terminal will remain as 6 volt. If, the to if it is connected with the series resistance and the voltage is given higher than 6 volt, the potential difference across the Zener diode will be remain as the Zener voltage. In this case, the Zener voltage is 6 volt. That is the difference between Zener diode and pin junction diode characteristics. Now, Zener diode is mostly used as voltage regulator. So I told you previously, if a voltage applied to a series resistance with a Zener diode in reverse bias condition, then the potential difference across the Zener diode will remain constant. Here in this case you can see 
if a 12 volt battery is connected with a 1k resistor and a 7 volt zener in series we will see that the potential difference across the zener will be 7 volt if the source voltage is increased to 14 volt then even the potential difference will be 7 volt now if the voltage is 4 volt then you can see the terminal voltage across the zener will be 4 volt you can see the whole simulation just by clicking on this thumbnail otherwise i will give you a small simulation now so how a zener diode can be used to regulate voltage here you can see a resistor and the zener diode of 5 volt is connected in series with a 2 volt battery supply now if we connect a multimeter across the diode the positive terminal of the multimeter will go to the cathode of the diode and the negative side will go to the ground now if we run the circuit and take the reading across the diode it will show that 2 volt is the voltage across the diode the zener diode but it is a 5 volt diode now if we increase the voltage from 2 volt to 4 volt now if we run the circuit again you can see the voltage drop across this diode is 4 volt that is quite common now if we change the voltage source a 6 volt battery then you can see the voltage drop across the diode will remain as 5 volt because it is a 5 volt diode and the terminal voltage the differences between the voltage of the terminal will never exceed 5 volt now if we change the circuit source as 10 volt now again you can see if we run the circuit the voltage drop across the zener diode is still 5 volt but the supply is 10 volt that's how a zener diode of a certain voltage rating can be used to regulate voltage in a circuit in this tutorial hope you have learned some basics about zener diode in the next tutorial we will start with bipolar junction transistor and other switching devices till then Thanks. Like and subscribe our channel Bing Engineering. Like our Facebook page. Bye.